Hola, oyentes. Bienvenidos al episodio 60. Welcome to episode 60 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. In this episode, we're going to be learning more Spanish through music. And to help me out, I am inviting back one of our favorite guests on the podcast, and that is Desta Haile from Languages Through Music. Desta is going to help us break down a bilingual song. Um, it's actually one of my favorite songs that came out not too long ago by one of my favorite, favorite artists. Um, and you'll learn in a minute why I asked Desta to help me out with it. And she's also going to update us on all the exciting projects that she's working on, as well as she has a special gift for the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast listeners. So if you stick around, you will definitely be able to take advantage of that if you act fast. All right. So I hope you enjoy this episode let's get started vamos a empezar bienvenidos welcome to the learn spanish con salsa podcast the show for spanish learners that love music travel and culture close your grammar textbooks shut down the language apps and open your ears to how spanish is spoken in the real world let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. So, Desta, welcome back to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Thank you so much. I can't believe it's been a year already. I know. Yeah, and you were uh, on the show back in episode 14. So if yeah. anyone, if you guys missed uh, that show, I definitely recommend you go back and listen to episode 14, where Desta talks all about how she overcame her struggles with learning French and actually used music to get her over that hump so that she could be more comfortable speaking the language. Um, and so the reason I invited Desta on today is because we're going to be go getting into a song by Maluma. And it actually is not just Spanish. There's also some Portuguese in the song. So that's why I've invited Desta because she has much better Portuguese skills than I do. <laughs> so we are going to get into the lyrics of this song, Corazón by Maluma. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to give Desta an opportunity to update us on what she's been up to since she was last on the show. I think the most recent news is I've been developing some ebooks. So. You get 20 songs, um, you get keywords in each song, 20 different artists, and a playlist. So I wanted to make kind of colorful, compact, effective musical intro to a, to a language. So I've been having a lot of fun with that, working with a lot of different teachers too, to make ebooks for languages um, I don't really speak. So everything from Zulu to Swahili to yeah, all as many as possible. So I've been having a blast with that really. And I'm, I'm hoping to have 20, 20 of them done by May. I've set myself that goal. Um, and it's really nice. I'm working on Japanese stream music with the guys who take Japanese with. A really great teacher based in Brazil. First generation Japanese Brazilian. Wow. And um, yeah, and there's a Spanish one, of course. So I would of love to, <laughs> to offer your Spanish con salsa listeners. Um, so there's, I made a, a little coupon for 10, 10 booklets for the first people who want to go check it out. And um, I'd love some feedback. And yeah, because you, you and everyone in Spanish con salsa understand how effective it is to learn through music and how much fun it is to yeah, definitely. And um, if anyone's interested in getting a copy of uh, one of Desta's ebooks, so she's got a Spanish version and there's also a Portuguese. So in case anyone listening is inspired to learn Portuguese after we go through <laughs> our lesson today, yeah. uh, you can check it out on our show notes page for this episode. So this is episode 60. So just go to learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 60. That's LearnSpanishConSalsa.com slash 60, and you'll get that 50% off coupon uh, with the code SpanishConSalsa for any of Desta's uh, Spanish or Portuguese ebooks. Um, and also, if you're listening to this in a podcast app, you can just scroll down to the show description and just click on the links if you're interested um, in getting one of the ebooks. I definitely recommend. I have gone through a few myself. I am still uh, trying to learn some Portuguese, so I've been going through some of her <laughs> Portuguese stuff, so it's a lot of fun. Fun. Uh, some of my favorite uh, songs are on uh, her playlist there. So definitely check those out. 
um, and take advantage of the 50% off, but you've got to act fast and be one of the first 10 people. A uh, very generous offer. So thank you so much for that, Dusta. Yeah, you're very welcome. And congratulations for making so many wonderful episodes. 60 already. That's, that's, you haven't stopped this year. Yeah, no, 2020, we're going to keep going. And uh, I want to focus more this year on uh, actually going through songs, right? So I asked for feedback from the audience. And a lot of you said that you uh, like the episodes where we actually go through and do a breakdown of a song. So I am going to, you know, do a little bit more of that in 2020. And hope hopefully you guys enjoy that. So let's get started then with this song. So I have to say a reason why I chose this song before we get started. So uh, Maluma is actually an artist from Colombia. Uh, he's known more of like for pop and reggaeton. So uh, extremely, extremely popular. This song actually came out back in 2017. Uh, and the name of the song is Corazón, which most of you know means heart. Uh, it also can mean like darling. It's sort of like a term of endearment. If you're in a relationship or you're talking to a loved one, you can say, ah, mi corazón. Uh, it's like my heart or my darling. Right. So, um, but I chose this song because it was super, super popular. And Desta, I think you said you checked before we, we got on that. Um, how many hits does the video have on YouTube? I thought it was a bug. I was blaming it on some Mercury retrograde stuff already. Because we said <laughs> a billion. And I don't think I've ever seen a billion hits on YouTube. It's very possible. Yeah, because I know the song, uh, in one of the first episodes, we did Despacito, which mm -hmm. was extremely popular for a very long time. And I'm pretty sure that song also is uh, at a billion hits or more by now. So yeah, wow. it, it's a thing. So it's a, it's a very catchy song. It's also pretty short. So I thought it'd be great to go through. So even if you're a beginner, this should be a pretty easy song to, to sort of understand. So yeah, so let's get to it. So we're going to start off with the first verse. And again, this is reggaeton, so the, the subject of the song essentially is about heartbreak, you know, so that's what the whole song is about. But there's a little bit of a positive spin on it, I think, by the end, so. <laughs> and, um, and also, just a note for all of you who know by now, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I am not playing the song on the podcast because we do not have the rights to do so. So you can definitely check out the video on YouTube, and we will include uh, a link to that and um, embed the video in the show notes page so that you can actually watch the the music video that goes along with it it's a great video um and then you'll also be able to get the lyrics on our show notes page as well at learn spanish con salsa.com forward slash 60 but we won't be playing the song but we will go through the lyrics and explain it so that when you go and listen to it you'll know exactly what's going on okay Oh, and actually, before I get into this, I'm actually going to say Desta. So uh, this is actually a collaboration. So it's not just Maluma. So can you tell us about the other artist uh, that he collaborates with? Neg do Borel. He has my dad's birthday, 10th of July. So I thought, oh, cool. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he he sings Brazilian funk. Um, but in, in Brazil, it's called funky. Because in Portuguese from Brazil... Um, they always add an E onto everything. So hip hop oh, okay. becomes hippie hoppy, for example. <laughs> and okay. funk will become funky. So you might have heard of Bailey Funky. And this is a, a kind called Funky Ostentação. And yeah, apparently he's a, he's a big hit too. He's worked with um, an artist called Anita, who I have heard of. She's super popular pop artist as well and she uh, she is, has huge shows even here in London and he's from Rio de Janeiro so mm -hmm. he's a carioca yeah, and car carioca is a word I learned very uh, quickly when I went to Brazil because everyone thought that I was from uh, Rio de Janeiro. So they're like, ah, yeah. vo você é carioca? And I'm like, no. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, apparently I look like I'm from uh, the southern part of Brazil. So hey, I can consider it a compliment. <laughs> yeah, and what's a really nice phrase I love and I was just reminded of um, last week. I was teaching uh, at a festival and I met this little little girl and she's carioca and I asked her if she was carioca and she said the gemma and the gemma means from the yolk like an egg yolk <laughs> so it's like I guess we would say to the bone or to the core like oh, so carioca okay. <laughs> like you carioca see sí, carioca the gemma Oh, like, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Literally from the egg yolk. <laughs> right, right. That's funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's definitely, like I said, in carioca just means someone that's from Rio, right? Essentially. Yeah. So. 
So yeah, so this song is a collaboration. It's like Brazilian and Colombian. So it's like reggaeton, it's a little funk. So it's a very fun song. Uh, so yeah, okay. So now that I, I got that, I wanted to explain that to give credit to both artists. Uh, so the first part of the song, he actually starts out um, and he says, Tu me partiste el corazón. Tu me partiste el corazón. So what this essentially means is you broke my heart. In Spanish, a lot of times they'll use the definite article. So it says el corazón instead of mi corazón. Uh, just because a lot of times when you're referring to your own body parts in Spanish, use the definite article. So if I was going to say, like, I broke my arm, I would say, me rompí el brazo. So I would say, el brazo, not mi brazo. So it just sounds weird if you if you say that, because it's sort of like you're talking about your body. We know it's yours, right? So, so it's kind of redundant. So in Spanish, you would use the definite article, el, because uh, corazón is masculine. And he says, tú me partiste el corazón. Uh, and that partiste is you split, right? So you split up or you broke up my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's from the verb partir, which is split. Uh, now, another way to say you broke my heart, which you probably, you know, more literal translation or more familiar is uh, tu me rompiste el corazón, which romper is to break. So in English, we probably would think of romper, but par partiste is a way... Uh, with the verb partir, it's a little stronger. It's like, you split my heart. It's a little bit more forceful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so he starts out just by saying, you broke my heart. That's and then, okay, I have one billion views now. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Maluma is not going to have a problem finding someone else. <laughs> it is like right after Valentine's Day here in the U.S., so it's sort of like a, a time everyone's been thinking about heartbreak, or they call it Single Awareness Day now. So this is kind of like... It's too funny, Single yeah, Awareness Day. Oh it's, like sad, it's like a flip on the word sad, so Single Awareness oh, Day. It's so hilarious. Funny. You know what's even funnier? In Brazil, Valentine's Day isn't on February 14th because February is about carnival, my friend. So ah, yes. I don't have anything competing with carnival. So Valentine's has just been shifted down to June. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I actually went to... Uh, Brazil for Carnaval and that was amazing amazing so yeah, yeah it, it definitely it's takes incredible. over the whole country okay so then he says uh, pero mi amor no hay problema pero mi amor no hay problema so basically uh, kind of what we were saying uh, but my love there's no problem right <laughs> mm -hmm. fine by me he's basically saying you know you broke my heart uh, but darling, like, so mi amor is like another term of endearment. It's like my sweetheart, darling, whatever like that, right? Or my love, literally. So, mm -hmm. but my love, no hay problema, right? So no hay problema is like, you know, there's no problem that exists, but it's a, it's a really common phrase. Actually, you can use in conversation. Like if somebody asked you a question, you just want to say no problem, right? Like we would say in English, ah, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you could say no hay problema. It's like, don't worry about it, right? No hay problema. So yeah, so he says that to her here, no hay problema. And then he says, this is like, this is how the song flips it, right? So it takes heartbreak and it makes it fun, right? <laughs> In a way. He says, ahora puedo regalar. Ahora puedo regalar. So now I can give, right? So regalar is a verb that means to give a gift, right? So in Spanish, there's a couple different ways to say to give. So dar is like, just to give in general, but if you're specifically talking about giving away something or giving a gift, you can use the verb regalar. So he's saying, ahora puedo regalar. And then he says, this is my favorite line of the song. <laughs> he says, un pedacito a cada nena. Okay, so un pedacito a cada nena. And then he says, solo un pedacito. So that's kind of like uh, part of the chorus of the song. It repeats a lot. So he's basically saying this un pedacito, if you remember from our Despacito episode, right? So this ito is what's called the diminutive in Spanish. So uh, it pretty much means something is like cute or small. So un pedacito is like a little piece. So it comes from the uh, word pedazo, which is piece. So un pedacito is like a little piece. And then a cada nena. So cada means each like each one. Mm -hmm. And nena is a like very colloquial way of like saying baby. It literally means baby, but you can also use it if you're talking to like a, a female and say, hey, nena. 
very common in Puerto Rico, even though Maluma is from Colombia. But uh, nena, nena, you hear it all the time. But it's it's really just kind of saying, hey, babe, you know, kind of thing. So, mm. un pedacito a cada nena. And then he says, solo un pedacito. So just a little piece. So essentially, this whole part says, you know, you broke my heart, but no problem. Now I can give just a little piece of my heart to every girl I meet almost. He's like, I'm not going to get caught up in one girl anymore. I'm going to give a little piece to each one, you know? So I feel like that's a little less risky, right? You give your heart away one little piece to each girl, then, hey, if one of them breaks your heart, you got like however many more, right? <laughs> yeah. Literally. So I don't know. You can take that as an empowering message or you can take it another way. I think it's a real fun way to think about heartbreak. I think also for, for people who are single this time of, you know, year here where everyone's just getting over the holidays in the U.S. where they're, you know, a lot of people go through a lot in the holidays. and They're like, oh, my God, I'm by myself. And then when Valentine's Day comes around, it's like the nexus of like singlehood and you really feeling like you're alone <laughs> until the spring comes everyone's kind of like, oh it's like so depressing for some people right so i think this is a very fun way to think about heartbreak it's like you know it's really not healthy to put all of your happiness eggs in one basket right like spread around the love right spread the love <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyway so that's like the 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 main uh verse of the song it's sort of like the chorus it repeats over and over uh and then he actually gets into the first verse uh, and he says, Ya no vengas más con esos cuentos. Ya no vengas más con esos cuentos. So he's basically saying, uh, no vengas is like, don't come to me it, with any more stories, right? Esos cuentos is like stories. So she's obviously been telling him some stories about what she's been up to, and he doesn't believe her. So he's saying, don't come to me anymore with those stories. Si desde el principio siempre estuve para ti. Si desde el principio siempre estuve para ti. So this estuve para ti. So first, uh, this para ti is para ti. So as you know, there's a lot of times in reggaeton music, sometimes in the Caribbean, that para is sort of cut. So it's like para ti. Estuve para ti or estar para ti means like literally to be for someone. But it's a way of saying like I was always there for you. So he's saying si desde el principio. So if... Since the beginning, I was always for you. I was always looking out for you. Si desde el principio siempre estuve para ti. And then he says, Nunca me avisaron cuál era el problema. Nunca me avisaron cuál era el problema. So he's saying, Nunca is never. Uh, and me avisaron. He's saying, you know, it's from the verb avisar, uh, which is to advise, right? So he said, You never gave me a heads up basically what the problem was Qual era el problema? so what was the problem so you, you're telling me these stories now I've always been all about you you never told me there was a problem okay and then he says te gusta estar rodando por camas ajena te gusta estar rodando por camas ajena <laughs> so this is an interesting way of saying this so te gusta is you like okay which you guys probably already know and estar rodando is like surrounded by or being around uh, por camas ajena. So it's uh, other people's beds, essentially. <laughs> so uh, ajena is an interesting word. We don't really have a direct translation for this in English. But it's really when you're talking about something that doesn't belong to you. You know, a person that doesn't belong mm. to you, a situation, a thing. So ajena is like, uh, it's, not, it's not like foreign, but it's more like... Uh, you know, you're you're talking about something that you really have no business, you know, being involved in. Like this is not your thing, and you're kind of injecting yourself into it. Uh, it's used sometimes in relationships to talk about a henna is a person that's outside of your relationship. In this case, he's saying straight, you know, camas a henna, so other people's beds. You know, like you're basically stepping out on me, and you never told me there was a problem. So yeah, so that was the first verse. So he's telling us, you know, basically the story about how this girl broke his heart. Now I'm going to actually skip. So there's an, there's another verse, but I want Dustin to take over because this, uh, there's a very similar part of what I just explained, but he gives the same, uh, sort of like the same, uh, explanation, but it's in Portuguese. So I want Dustin to go through that part of the song where he goes through, uh, it's really like the second part of the chorus and he's breaking down, uh, this this kind of same thing about how this girl broke his heart. So he says, "Você partiu meu coração, ai meu coração." 
você partiu meu coração. Ai, meu coração. And it's interesting what you said about the, there being kind of two breaks, because um, in Portuguese there's also quebrar, um, uh -huh. but partiu is the one used with your heart. Mas meu amor, não tem problema, não, não. So, but my love, the, there is no problem, no, no. So exactly the same in Spanish. You broke my heart, oh my heart. But my love, there's no problem, no, no. Um, you get that a lot in Brazilian Portuguese. They kind of say no twice, like there's no problem, no. Não tem problema, não. Um, agora vai sobrar então. So that's a, a very common sound in Portuguese. Um, agora vai, so, vai sobrar então. Okay, okay. It's like what's left now? What, what? Okay, it's kind of funny in English because I guess it's like the what, the what, but um, it, it's how it's said in Portuguese. O and A are the K, it's what. So what's left now? Um pedacito a cada nena, solo um pedacito. So a piece for each nena, like you said in Portuguese as well, technically it's baby, but in this case it's like girl. Yeah, babe, girl. So a piece for each girl, just a little piece. So, but solo is Spanish, and Portuguese would be so. So just S O. So um pedaço is piece. Pedacito here is Spanish, like a little. Se eu não guardo nem dinheiro. Se eu não guardo nem dinheiro. So that means if I don't even keep money. Um, like if I don't even hold on to money, how am I gonna hold on to a grudge? Que dirá guardar rancor? So if I'm not even gonna hold on to money, who you know who's to say like you know why would I hold on to a grudge? Você vacilou primeiro. Brazilian Portuguese use você more for you, and Portuguese from Portugal, Mozambique they use tu more. So if you Here either, it's not wrong, it's just different. Você is really Brazilian. So, você vacilou primeiro. So, vacilou is like to wobble, or like to hesitate. So, you you know, you're the one who hesitated or who faltered first. Nosso caso acabou. So, our case, literally, but you know, we're over. Like, our case is over, but we were just like, yeah, we're over, it's over. So yeah, você partiu no coração, mas meu amor não tem problema não. Agora vai sobrar então o quê? Um pedacito a cada nena. And then, se eu não guardo nem dinheiro, que dirá guardar rancor? Você vacilou primeiro, nosso caso acabou. So it's all over, but he's not gonna be grudgeful about it. Maybe because of this one billion something, yes. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the thing that's so interesting to this, uh, I have to say this too, like when I first listened to this song, I got very confused, like when the Portuguese part started at first, because I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know the song was bilingual, right? Because I just know Maluma, right? <laughs> yeah, it is funny because there's some there's some words that are so similar. So yeah. Like when you're reading it, sometimes I'll be reading it and then I'm like, oh, I've stepped into Spanish. <laughs> yeah, the to make some the diminutive in in Portuguese is is a inho or inha, mm -hmm. i n h o or i n h a, but yeah, it just sounds so similar. But then at the end, he says he says, "Eu não sei falar muito bem português. I don't know how to speak Portuguese too well." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> This is my favorite part. So if you watch the video, um, and I'm going to go back because we skipped the verse, but I did, we were talking about this since you brought it up. So at the end, so all the Portuguese in this in this so far is from the Brazilian artist, right? But at the end, yeah. uh, the video is like actually filmed in Sao Paulo. And uh, Maluma is there like partying. He's hanging out with all the Brazilians. And so he's at this party and he's trying to talk to this girl, right? <laughs> So at the end, he's like, uh, he's trying to like talk to her in Portuguese. So he's, it sounds very, very slow and very like, you know, the way he says it, he's like, you know, I don't know how to speak Portuguese very well. And then he's like, but I want to learn. So I guess he's motivated. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, ciao, ciao. Eu não sei falar muito bem português. <laughs> 
then you know what else I noticed about this uh, Destin you probably know more about this than I do but uh, he actually is trying to speak with the accent from Rio de Janeiro because he says yeah. Portuguese he says Portuguese yeah Rio so Cariocas use a lot of the shh so my friends from from outside uh, one of the states in Brazil they're like Cariocas sound like broken radios with all their shh <laughs> But frankly, I think it's the coolest accent, and I think a lot would try and imitate Cariocas, even if they're not from there. <laughs> yeah, 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 very true. Yeah, I just thought that was so cute at the end. Like, he's like, uh, trying to you know learn portuguese which you know if you are by the end of this you can definitely check out desta's ebook uh if you're inspired by this because it is very similar to spanish so there is some uh you know some things that you learn from spanish that will be very useful with portuguese so if it's something you've thought about or you want to visit brazil i definitely recommend giving it a shot and learning through music as you know uh, if you're learning spanish yeah, through music you can also learn portuguese through music yeah. And I think for for people who speak Spanish but you know are even interested in traveling in Brazil, it's more um, about kind of getting the listening comprehension going. Because when I had friends from Spain visit me when I lived in Brazil, my Brazilian friends could understand them, but they couldn't understand the Brazilians. So it's funny. I don't know why that is exactly, but um, I think even just working on the on the listening comprehension can really help because so much of the kind of base and the vocabulary and when you see the written words, you know, you can get so much. Um, and music always helps with listening comprehension. Yeah, and this is a great song to start with because you already know the subject matter and you can get used to listening to both Spanish and Portuguese uh, at the yeah. same time. So I want to go through like the last part of the song that uh, we skipped over because I wanted to get the Portuguese part. But I'm, I save this for last because it's also... Um, this this line, it took a while for me to be able to hear it. So we're talking about listening comprehension. And the reason why is because uh, there's actually three different languages in one line. So we'll, we'll break that down. <laughs> uh, and that can be very difficult too, because like, you know, if you're listening and you're, you're, you're expecting to hear one language and you hear another one, sometimes it can throw you off, right? So uh, to getting used to that sort of uh, bilingual type of reality and listening to things, it's, it's kind of a, a different skill. So um, so, okay, so he says, and this is Maluma again, he says, Ahora me tocó a mí cambiar el sistema. Ahora me tocó a mí cambiar el sistema. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, um, this me tocó. So in, in Spanish, tocar means to touch, right? But uh, there is an expression that says, uh, when you're using tocar, like if I say, uh, te toca a ti, o me toca a mí, it's a way of saying, it's your turn. So, te toca a ti means it's your turn. Like, it touches you or something yeah. like that. So, if I say, me toca a mí, I'm saying it's my turn. So, in this case, um, Maluma is saying, now, you know, it's my turn to cambiar el sistema, which literally is to change the system. But I would really translate this, because this is reggaeton, right? So, like, if I was going to say this in English, I would say, like, I'm going to flip the script, which may sound mm -hmm. old school, like, may sound very 90s right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, you know, it's like you're changing things, right? Like I'm, a, I'm basically changing the paradigm here, right? Like I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit here and cry about you breaking my heart. I'm going to look at this differently. And now it's my turn. So you broke my heart. You decided to go outside of a relationship. Now it's my turn to do something different, essentially. Um, and also in Spanish, I guess it's the same as Portuguese. Tocar is the verb used for instruments. Right, exactly. To play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it says, andar con gatas nuevas. Uh, so andar con is like andar kind of means like to hang out with or to go with and you know go do things with andar con gatas nuevas so gatas literally means cat but obviously here he's talking about hanging out with new women gatas nuevas and then he says repartir el corazón sin tanta pena repartir el corazón sin tanta pena so this repartir he's repairing his heart you know, without too much trouble, right? So mm. this is his way of uh, of repairing his heartbreak. So, you know, sometimes they say you need new experiences if you're going through a breakup. So he's saying he's going to go hang out with new people and that's how he's going to heal his heartbreak. Um, okay, and so this is the line that was confusing as hell to me. So he says, Ahora te digo goodbye, okay? So this is English and Spanish, right? So ahora te digo, so now I say to you, goodbye so which is weird because like in the song he says it with the like accent so he's like oh, te digo goodbye and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> i was like 
what is going on right now? Idea, okay? Right, exacto. <laughs> and then he says, then it switches to Portuguese. He says, muito obrigado, right? Mm-hmm. So, which is thanks a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, right? And then he says, pati ya no hay. Pati ya no hay. So that's para ti, ya no, which is, uh, so para ti is for you. Ya no means no longer. He's saying, yeah. I'm no longer about you. I'm not here for you anymore. You know, estuve para ti, pero para ti ya no hay. So I'm not about you anymore. I'm moving on. So, nothing left for you here. Exactly. No hay. No hay nada para ti. There's nothing here for you. But it's interesting. So it's like very fast. Like if you listen to the song, he says, Ahora te digo goodbye. Muito obrigado para ti ya no hay. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go one line you have Spanish you have English you have Portuguese and back to Spanish again within like one you know two seconds so that's why I wanted Desta to come on also just to kind of expose everyone to a different uh, type of bilingualism so we usually we do strictly Spanish and English but this is a, a Spanish and Portuguese bilingual song with a little English sprinkled in right because he sort of says Maluma baby and there's a couple of little things that are in English in here So it really shows how, you know, cultures really mesh together and and people do a lot of traveling and a lot of uh, different collaborations and how, you know, really the world is like bigger than, you know, sort of our little space and how we perceive Mm -hmm. things. So I really love this song for all those reasons. It's a great mesh of cultures. So and a great exposure to Portuguese for the first time if this is uh, not something you have studied before. Thank you for asking me. Muito obrigada. Y en español es muchas gracias. Muito obrigado. Muchas gracias. So thank you so much for coming on the show again. And uh, just a reminder. So how can folks uh, reach out to you if they want to find you on social media and find out about your new books that are coming out for uh, different languages as well? They can find me on Languages Through Music on Facebook, on Instagram, or languagesthroughmusic.com. So yeah, please reach out. I'd love some feedback on the on the booklet and aiming to have a whole bunch of other languages up by me. So working, working away at that. So I'll keep you posted. Don't forget, if you want to get the 50% off, be one of the first 10 people that visits our show notes page at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash 60. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 60. And you can get 50% off of the Languages Through Music Spanish or Languages Through Music Portuguese ebooks. Thank you again. Desta que tengas un buen día. Y tú también, ahora te digo goodbye, muchas gracias. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great day, so nice to see you. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Desta. Don't forget to visit our show notes page if you want to get the full lyrics and watch the video to the song Corazón. Que tengas un buen día. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.